Now, karst aquifer is, it's composed usually of limestone rock because it's soluble, okay? Uh, um, a karst aquifer contains caves, sinkholes, places where the stream can go completely underground. In some places in our area, on Onion Creek, you can see a place on Onion Creek where a whirlpool forms. You can hear this whirlpool hundreds of feet away, a very loud feature, just like the whirlpool in the bottom of your bathtub, okay? It sucks down, sometimes the entire creek goes underground at that point. You know, in the cave below, there's a skylight entrance, and that's a sinkhole. Sometimes they're formed by solution, where the rocks above them had dissolved away, making a bowl above it. Sometimes it's from collapse, where the roof of your, of your cave gets close enough to the surface and the roof collapses in. Two different types of sinkholes you have. Okay, so when we talk about sinkholes today, this is what we'll, what we'll be seeing. Okay, sinking streams or places like I mentioned where the whole creek can go underground, or maybe so much of it goes underground that you have a whirlpool forming above it. We're, we're focusing now on the stratigraphic members of the Edwards Aquifer, which have different properties as far as transmitting water. Now we're in a site on Barton Creek here where the Edwards Aquifer, what we're standing on here, is at the surface. Okay, one thing I didn't introduce you to at the last stop is that this is, a, is a, an area called the recharge zone where the rocks are at the surface so the water can readily go into the aquifer or come out through a spring. So the recharge zone concept is an open area where the rocks are exposed to the surface and the water can then go in through the creek bottom and enter the aquifer and recharge the aquifer. Just like you're recharging a battery, the aquifer gets recharged by filling it up with water.